In this week's episode, I have seven tips for planning and producing better images in the field. Ever wonder why some photographers seem to get so lucky with incredible light? Perhaps there is some luck involved, but it's mostly planning. So knowing when to shoot is just as important as how to shoot. Simply put, planning is essential for landscape photographers. Unlike yesterday's photographers, today we have resources at our fingertips. We use apps for knowing exactly where the sun or moon will rise and set. We use title apps, weather maps, weather apps, Google apps, Google maps, and these are all essential tools that should be part of your planning toolbox. The key is to try them and find the ones that work best for you. Then master them. Use them often, understand how to navigate the menus, and utilize the features that are most important to your photography and research. Now, think about it. Knowing when and where the sun will rise gives you the advantage strategically to position yourself before even being on location, saving lots of time as well as reducing mistakes. So to sum up, planning should be done before the shoot. Use it for time-sensitive information, sunrise, moonset, etc. But you can also use it for compositional ideas. Now, if you're not familiar with this workflow, a good starting point may be to download an app such as Sun Severe, one of my favorites, search for a location you're familiar with, and plan a shoot sometime in the near future. You begin learning the app while working with a landscape that you know well. You have to put in the time to learn. There's just no way around that. But this is really a great way to start. Scouting entails visiting a location prior to the shoot. This gives a sense of place and orientation. It also helps to envision compositional ideas. Technically, you can think of scouting as an extension to planning and preparation, but unlike sitting at your computer, you're actually on location and visualizing the actual landscape. And don't forget, you can use your apps while there. Some apps such as Sense of Air and Photopills, they have a, like a, a virtual live view where you can swipe a timeline to position the sun or the moon for a particular time in composition while also looking at a real scene in front of you. And this is all done through the app. I'll share a link above for the tutorial on how to do this. Other benefits to scouting include safety and pre-compositional ideas. For example, if you're not familiar with a location, consider that you'll most likely be arriving before first light when it is still dark. And if the area happens to be dangerous, cliffs, drop-offs, scouting, really, scouting can reveal these dangers during daylight, as opposed to getting there and not seeing them. A great tip while scouting is to use your phone's camera and make some photographs that you find inspiring. Later on, you can review them and use that info for potential compositions when you return for the shoot the next day. So to sum up, plan your scouting during times of harsh light, such as the afternoon light, where you wouldn't normally find yourself photographing a landscape, but have the benefit of seeing and feeling the landscape itself. Blue hour is one of my favorite times to shoot. It occurs twice each day, prior to sunrise and just after sunset when the sun is just below the horizon. One of my favorite apps to quickly check atmospheric information is Lumi due to its simple layout. I'll share a link to Lumi in the description if you're interested. Now, arriving early for sunrise puts you in a frame of mind and conditions you to your surroundings. You're not rushing or anxious and you have time to study the light and enjoy the special moments of Blue Hour that are just magical in my opinion. Blue Hour reveals wonderful blue hues along with vibrant orange and, and yellow tones as the sun draws closer to the horizon. It makes for a wonderful landscape and seascape photography. During your planning, now you're not gonna like this, consider arriving on scene an hour before sunrise. I know, I know, but in doing so, you'll be afforded opportunities to photograph blue hour, golden hour, and sunrise itself. It's like having three shooting ops all in a single morning. Just saying.
Tip number four I like to call tripodology. When arriving on scene, do take a moment to breathe in the atmosphere and study what the conditions and light are doing. But don't mount your camera to your tripod. Instead, handhold your camera. Begin composing with your viewfinder and LCD screen. Either one is fine. Walk around. Arrange your elements in frame. Switch lenses. Basically, hone in your composition and feel the landscape. Go with your emotions. Now, when you feel you've found your composition, mark that area and then grab your tripod. Position it in that sweet spot. That's your starting point for making great imagery. Now, tip number five I like to call life in the frame. Now, life in the frame is how I like to think about what's important and what's distracting. Landscape photography is a subtractive art. Unlike painters who begin with an empty canvas, landscape photographers begin with an entire scene to choose from. The idea is to find a subject and then remove distractions that may divert the viewer's attention or their enjoyment of your work of art. Now we can do this by reviewing the four corners of our frame. That's a good habit to get into. Checking for branches, patches of light, or objects that are disruptive. But furthermore, life in the frame is about balance within a composition. Giving your subject room to breathe and balance within the frame is usually a good starting point. So for example, if you were composing a tree as your main subject with no other real competing elements, if you place that tree quite close to the edge of the frame, you may begin to feel tension and anxiety. Um, if you cut off too much of the top of the tree or the trunk of the tree, you most likely sense an uneasiness or the restless sensation. Now, of course, there are exceptions. For example, if you're attempting to focus more detail on the tree itself or a section of the tree, then you might crop in tighter and intentionally capture that portion of the tree making it obvious to the viewer that the subject of your photograph is that section of the tree, not the entire tree itself. So life in the frame is a great term for remembering what holds value inside the four lines that make up your image. How much space your subject occupies. This is all about balance and scale. The rule of thirds go hand in hand with life in the frame as far as I'm concerned and can be a great asset for assisting with composition or just a good starting point. While chimping can be controversial, there's nothing wrong with checking your LCD screen for sharp images and proper exposure. I'm just saying. Sometimes technical and creative tasks clash, and it's much better to discover a blurry image early on before making too many images, only to realize later on that your best photos are basically useless. So after making the image, review by zooming in on your LCD screen checking sharpness where your focal point is and where it is not. And make sure you're content with the depth of field and the aperture settings you chose. Tip number seven, enjoy the experience, value the moments in nature. Whether you're shooting professionally or personally, don't forget to embrace the experience. Savor the moments and the scenery. It's healthy, it's spiritual nourishment. Take a few moments and fill your soul with what nature has given you on that day. It, try it, try it. Well, that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed these tips. Leave your comments below and like and subscribe if you found value in this video. Um, I'd appreciate it. I'll see you next week.